Good morning, Calvary Chapel young people. Good morning. We are now reporting from... The North Pole. Yes, we are. This is the Sunday before Christmas. It is. So we want to wish all of you a very, very Merry Christmas. We do. This is a joyous, joyous season. And there have been so many changes that have taken place in our lives over the last almost full year that it probably feels a little different but what isn't different is that this is a joyous joyful season and we want to make sure that you're celebrating it and feeling just the excitement of the birth of Jesus because that is the whole reason what for the season, season is true. the birth of Christ and no matter what else is going on, that has not changed. Right. You don't really need to, you really don't need these things at all, do you? No, it's just for fun. It is fun. We strung some lights today, and we've been watching pretty much nonstop Christmas mu movies. And if it's not movies, there's Christmas music on. And um, there's not a lot of people around. It's just the two of us. Um, but we're excited. We're, we're, we're focusing on the birth of our Lord and the wonderful gifts he has given us, most, most importantly, the gift of salvation. And so, here we go. Here we go. And today, if you remember last week, we studied the birth of Christ mm -hmm. and how the shepherds rejoiced and how the heavenly bodies all celebrated the birth of Christ mm -hmm. with the shepherds and how the shepherds went into the town of Bethlehem and shared the good news of Christ's birth. This week, we're going to talk about some men who came from the Far East, mm -hmm. and they're called Magi. Mm -hmm. And in today's language, we normally refer to them as the wise men. Sometimes you'll hear them referred to as the three kings. Sometimes three kings. We don't know if there were three. There could have been six. We don't know. That's true. And that's unimportant. But what, it, what is important, these were learned men. These were men that were respected throughout the world for their knowledge. They had spent a lifetime studying the Old Testament. They knew a king was coming. They didn't know when. And what we will learn today is what they went through to come and celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. They set out on a, on a journey, a very important journey. And one of the things that they teach us is that our walk with Jesus, set a different way, our faith is like a journey. And just as they went out and they walked for miles and miles and miles, we don't necessarily walk or travel like they did. No. But our faith, our path with walking in with the Lord, that's a journey too. And, and so we can learn from the wise men or the magi um, about, about a journey and about a journey with our Lord. Yes, we can. So one of the things that this story will teach us is that this was miraculous news. At Christmas time, we celebrate the good news that Jesus was born. And that's what, why the wise men made the journey that they did. We also celebrate as Christians the greatest gift that could ever be given. And that is the gift of salvation given by the birth of Christ. This was a miraculous birth. Not just miraculous news, but a birth. God promised to send a Savior. We studied that throughout the whole, throughout the whole Old Testament. And though... There were doubters, and it sounded impossible. He made it happen. Yep. He promised, and he fulfilled his promise. Because we know what? What have we learned through all this year? God can't make a promise that he won't keep. Absolutely. It's just, it's just not in his nature. This also, from, for, the, for the Magi, this was a miraculous mission. And just like the shepherds went out to tell everyone what they witnessed on, about Jesus' birth that night, this mission that these three or four or six or however many wise men, this mission, this journey that they went out, 
um, is, a, is a miraculous mission. You, you can't have this without the miraculous birth and without the miraculous news. And so this gives us an opportunity to, to embark on, to set out on, to begin our own miraculous mission where we go out and we tell everybody we meet every opportunity we can about the good news, the true good news about Christmas time. Are you going to pray for us? Okay, I'll pray. Dear Heavenly Father, this is such an exciting time, and with everything changed in our world right now, it's almost easier for us to see why this is such an exciting time in our Christian walk. And so we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to share these materials with our kids, even though we can't be with them. We pray, Lord, for a healing on our land, a healing of hearts, a healing from COVID, a healing from all of the things that make life sometimes very hard and very disappointing, Lord. We know you're with, it, with us through all of those trials. We ask you to hold us close, to keep us remembering that this is the that Jesus birth is the reason for the season and that anytime we're struggling and anytime we've got something to celebrate we need to be lifting our eyes to you giving you praise and asking your help to walk in your will we pray these things in Jesus name amen amen so now we're going to start reading mr. Rudy's going to start reading and we're reading from the book of Matthew. Chapter 2. Yes, we are. Starting in verse 1. Yes. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, We, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. Continuing right through, verses 3 through 6, When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judah, excuse me, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Ju Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. It's kind of amazing that the wise men knew of the birth of Christ mm -hmm. and had sought it and mm -hmm. were waiting for it. And the king of the Jewish people had no idea what was going on. No, they, he wasn't thinking those kinds of thoughts. But he wasn't a very nice guy either. He was not. He was a very bad king, and he didn't think anybody else could be king other than himself. Right. So he was not what we would call in, uh, in line with the Jewish faith of that time. And he was not seeking the Lord, and nor was he seeking God's will in his life. Now, in 7 and 8 we read, Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had <clears throat> come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, 
his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. And we see here where man may try to alter God's plan, but ultimately, God's plan will be done. And that's what we need to focus on all the time in our lives now, today, as well as when we're reading over 2,000 years ago. Yeah. That God has not left us. We are still God's children in his care and protection, and he still has a plan for the earth. And that we need to continuously, on a daily basis, seek God's will for our life and seek a deeper understanding of God. And that's what the wise men represents. They were learned, knowledgeable, and they spent a long time studying mm -hmm. the old scriptures. And I am sure their journey took them many months to go from the Far East to Bethlehem. Don't forget, they traveled on foot and by camel. Mm -hmm. No airplanes, no cars. No buses. You know, if they could do 20 miles a day, that was probably pushing it. It was probably closer to 10. Mm -hmm. So it took a long journey. So they were persistent. And they stayed true to what they believed. They followed the star. And the star of Bethlehem is a very special star. Because through, if you look at the stars today, as it goes through the 24-hour clock, the stars move. They rotate as the Earth. Earth is rotating, and it changes the position of the stars for your view. But the Bethlehem star always stayed in the same spot. That is a miracle done by God. So why did they? Why were they following the star? Why were they? Why? Why? What did they think it was a sign of? The Magi believed that the star was a sign of the birth of a king for the Jewish people, and they were rather surprised that the uh, uh, kingdom of Herod had no comprehension of what was happening. So, um, what, what did the angels tell the shepherds to comfort them? The angels told them that the Messiah had been born and asked them to share that with the surrounding people of Bethlehem. And as the angels, just a picture, you know, you like a birthday party. Mm -hmm. And this was a birthday party of all birthday parties because you have the shepherds, you have angels, you have heavenly bodies, and they are singing and they are worshiping and they are praising God. And it just had to be a magnificent sight to behold as a lonely shepherd. Because people from all over came to see the baby, yes? Oh, yes. And the Magi were a, a great example. They came from the East, which would have been, we don't know where in the East, but it, it was, we assume that it was very far. And, well, we, we assume it's very far. And also, the Bible refers to Jesus as a child at this point. No longer a baby in a manger, as we picture it on po uh Christmas cards, he was probably, you know, a year to two years old. Mm -hmm. So it was a long journey for the wise men. It wasn't to come. the day that he was born necessarily. No, no, no. Okay. No. And so the star guided them. That's that is truly miraculous. And when what what where were they when they started to ask people about the king the newborn king of the Jews? Well, they had gone to Jerusalem mm -hmm. because that was the capital of Judea, mm -hmm. and that's where the king was, and that's where they inquired. 
And did they find people who knew anything about it? They, the people that were somewhat ignorant, but they did go to the Old Testament mm -hmm. and looked it up and found where the birth was to take place. Okay, okay. And so this baby to be born is being promised as, as the king of the Jews. Yes. But was there not already somebody who thought himself to be the king of the Jews? King Herod, again, who was not a very nice king. Uh, he was resentful that somebody else would be called king of the Jews. Mm. He said, I am the king of the Jews only. Sounds like he had a lot of self-pride. He had a lot of self-pride. Mm -hmm. He was arrogant. Mean. And mean. Mm. So they, they went to Jerusalem, and then where did they go? Then they went to the city of Bethlehem. And as what we call is the uh, star of Bethlehem shone over the place where Jesus, his mother, earthly mother and earthly father were caring for the child. And it guided them directly to where they were staying. Because it just stayed above the baby. Yeah. And if you think, about, again, the earth rotates, so you get as the earth rotates throughout the day, you look at, you see the heavenly bodies in a different form, but not in this case. The star of Bethlehem stayed in the same spot. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't know if you could see it during the day. We, it may have been only visible at night. We don't, we, we don't know that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's important whether we could see it at day, see it at, only at night. But it gave them enough direction, the wise men I'm talking about, that they knew where to go. And, and so you mentioned gifts that they brought to the baby. They didn't bring stuffed animals or rattles, huh? No, these gifts gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Uh, frankincense and myrrh were used in burial. Gold was obviously a, uh, a gift given only to uh, special people because gold was not readily available to the average person. So these gifts were kind of, on earth, considered to be, they were probably expensive. They might have been rare. So they, they were considered to be worthy of giving to a king. Worthy of giving to a king and also representing kind of what would happen to our Lord as he became a man and how he was going to uh, be treated and what would happen to him as he became our savior and what he had to, what price he had to pay mm -hmm. to be our savior. I wonder what they thought as they were bringing gifts suitable for a king and suitable for a person who would grow to do very, very important things. And they found him born in a manger. Well, I think the wise men understood. They understood what his birth meant. And, and that was the important thing. That may be why we refer to them as wise men. Probably. So how did God warn them, and, and Joseph even, that Herod had planned to kill baby Jesus, or the child Jesus? Well, through a dream. Mm -hmm. and, and we know that God talks to us through dreams, through visions. But in this case, he gave them a dream and told them not to return to Herod, but to go a different way in return, to, to return to their home. And that's what they did. And uh, what Herod wanted, he wanted to know where Jesus was, because he was going to kill him. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was the simple plan that Herod had. He was an evil king. But God's plan, again, will not be faltered by man. God had a plan. 
that started in Genesis and ends in Revelation, and man cannot alter that plan. In our journey with Jesus, we don't have to travel across a continent. We know that he's always with us. All we have to do is pray. And we, and we can pray with the bowed heads or we can sit and just talk to him. Mm -hmm. He's always there for us. No matter what we're doing. No matter what or where or what our circumstances are, he is always there for us. And that is the miraculous gift of Christmas. Not the frankincense, not the gold, but the real present of Christmas is that God is available to us every day as long as we ask. That's all we have to do is open our voice or speak to him through a quiet thought and he's there for us. Always. Always. Well, amen. Amen to that. Now, just one more time, we want to wish you Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And uh, we will talk to you uh, in another week, and we'll be starting a whole new series mm -hmm. of uh, Sunday School Lessons. And we hope you've enjoyed this past year, and we look forward to a much brighter 2021. We're looking forward to it, too. Would you close us in prayer? Yes. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this word. Thank you for the example of the Magi. Lord, we know that uh, they were learned men, and they studied your word, and they sought you out, and they give us an example that we need to study your word and seek you. And if we do that, you are readily available to us. You have promised that if we seek you, we will find you. And you will be with us and you will guide and direct our steps. So we know we're in very difficult times. And there's things that going on that we have uh, difficulty comprehending. Uh, and we don't quite understand why. But the one thing... It, constant that we have in our life is that you're there, you will be with us, and you will see us through the most difficult and dark times as you will see us through the glorious and happy times. And today, as we celebrate your son's birth in all the chaos of this world, it is a glorious time. And it is a time to raise our voices in praise to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.